Do you ever catch yourself in the imagination loop? And I don't know what you call it. I don't really even call it that. I kind of just came up with that on the spot. But it's the thing where you're rehearsing a conversation in your head that you haven't had yet. It's a conversation that's going to come up. Maybe. I mean, you don't even know if it'll ever come up. But it's looping in your head over and over. Here's this iteration. What if this thing is said? Let's think about this thing. Maybe I want to say that. And in your head, you're basically the most suave, charming, correct person ever. You're right. And whoever you're talking to is going to know that you're right because of what you're saying. And they'll just sit there and listen. Right? And when they, when they start to talk, you will be able to silence them at the wave of a hand. Maybe a word. <laughs> and you can get your points out. Never. <laughs> it's never like that. And why are we in this imagination loop in the first place? We're literally wasting time doing nothing, not having the conversation, lost in your head, in your own thoughts, possibly working yourself up. Like possibly wasting your day thinking about a conversation that may never happen. Why? I think it's because humans are very, very, like, how do you say, status aware. Like we're, we're aware of our status in the tribe. If you fall too far out of standing with your tribe, you have to go into the forest alone, then you get eaten by animals, and then you're dead. <laughs> and I think that's in our brain still, in this society. I think that still plagues us. And, and so the idea of an uncomfortable conversation causes really great anxiety in some people. Just because you could go off and be eaten by tigers if the conversation goes badly enough. So you rehearse in your head to make sure that you know how you're going to react if something comes up. You know what you're going to say. You know exactly what you're going to tell them. Why? Why waste your mental energy on that? Your emotional reserve of capacity to feel. You're taking yourself out of the moment that's now. You're denying yourself existence to exist in some kind of like chaotic, uh, dramatic fairy tale. And nine times out of ten, those rehearsals don't turn out anything like that in real life. So you're, in, you're, you're just hurting yourself. There's no net positive. That's not how you practice a speech for public speaking. That's not how you set up a, a video or <laughs> practice a script for a play. You're just rehearsing a conversation that may never happen and probably has negative connotations. That's what I'm thinking of right now. That's what we're talking about right now. And to you, who might relate to this, but also to me, stop doing that. Stop it. <laughs> you're not helping yourself. You're not helping the person you're thinking of talking to. You're not solving any problems. You're just running on a hamster wheel of negativity and denying yourself the chance to be happy right now. You're denying yourself to experience the, the chance to experience what's going on around you at that exact moment. Don't. Don't. You deserve better than that. How do we get around that? How do we fix it? And, and I, I don't mean fix it like you're broken or I'm broken for rehearsing these things or anything like that. I mean, how do you get out of that? How do you leave the negativity behind? And just move forward. Get present to where you are. And move forward with your life. Rather than literally torturing yourself. How do you do it? Here's how I do it. So, first you have to work out the emotions 
that are going on inside your body. If you are frustrated, be frustrated. Be so frustrated. I'm so frustrated with this. I can't stand what's going on. I get it out. Get it out. Express it. Because that emotion is stuck in your nervous system right now. It's running circles around your body. And until you get it out, if you're happy, be happy. <laughs> Let it out. The idea is that you're expressing your emotions. Think about if you have to cry and you hold it in. Does that feel good? It doesn't feel good. It's painful. It's difficult to hold tears in. It's the exact same thing for every emotion. Let it out. Step one, express yourself. Step two, the hard part, you have to forgive yourself for any previous interactions that caused you to now be on this track of needing a second interaction. Okay, that's the, that's the hard part. Because maybe you don't want to look at yourself in forgiveness. Maybe you did nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. You have to let that go. You have to let go of that pride and forgive yourself. And when you find a way to do that, then part three, you got to forgive them. You've got to put yourself in their shoes, see yourself through their eyes, and forgive them for whatever it is. Whatever it is, let it go. They're human. You're human. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has thoughts and interactions and, and emotional outbursts. Just as it was difficult to forgive yourself, it might be very difficult to forgive them. But don't neglect that part. You express the emotions. You forgive yourself. You forgive them. And then you need to ground yourself. This could mean all sorts of things. People use it in all different contexts. But the way I do it is I breathe. That's it. You take a big deep breath. You focus on breathing horizontally. I read that somewhere. So a vertical breather is... <sighs> Think horizontally. Like as you're breathing, you, <sighs> you expand. And then when you exhale, you contract your stomach muscles. Exhale. I like to imagine that I have balloons in my chest, in my belly. And I'm expanding, and then when I exhale, it's almost like it pushes the floor of, of my belly, like my, the top of my hips, my pelvic floor, there we go. It pushes my pelvic floor down, like down towards my toes as I exhale, and I feel the air almost in a circle as it comes through my chest and expands the balloon of my belly, and then as I exhale, it, it travels up my spine and out my mouth. Do this while visualizing yourself in a peaceful way. While thinking of how calm your mind is when you've let these things go. You inhale. See that vertical breathing, right? Not quite. You gotta horizontally breathe. Expand your belly. Do this again and again. Set 20 minutes aside. Go breathe with yourself. You don't need to take the full 20 minutes. Just breathe in a dark room, 20 minutes. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. But give yourself the time to really clear your mind while you focus on taking deep, fulfilling breaths, grounding yourself to the moment around you. You want to be present to the world as it's happening around you as you are interacting within it. You're trying to get back in touch with now. Because you owe it to yourself. Stop running on that imagination loop. I don't remember what I called it. <laughs> Let it go. Do it in a healthy way. And then breathe and move on. 
and go through those four steps as often as you need to. Let it out. I don't know, now we're dancing. Got to dance, I guess. Let out the emotion. Forgive emotion. Forgive yourself. Forgive them and breathe. Come back to now and move on. Let your mind focus on what you want it to focus on rather than repeating these useless conversations that only hurt you. You are capable. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. And if I may.